I, I will um, try in the, in the next uh, 20 minutes to uh, present a, a review of uh, a kind of uh, symbiosis, which in fact uh, profoundly shape the, the tropical environment and has a huge impact, not only on the biodiversity and uh, ecology, but also on, uh, on human society. Uh, coral and uh, associated organisms were in fact classified either uh, during the age as a, as a plant or as a stone. But in fact, it is a, a medicine a doctor from Marseille, Jean-André Peissonnel, who discovered the, the, the real nature of this organism, uh, animal nature, uh, in the mid-18th century. Uh, and the work was uh, published in the Philosophical Transaction of the Royal Society of London and in the, in the Marseille Academy. Uh, Nevertheless, um, even after this uh, discovery of the animal nature of this organism, they are, uh, continue to be called uh, zoophyte or uh, phytozoan, even at, uh, until the, the mid-20th uh, century. In fact, it's not uh, so strange, but uh, uh, because in addition to their uh, resemblance uh, or to, to uh, plants, uh, coral and gorgonians. They also uh, possess another common point with uh, this organism. Uh, all, almost all of the uh, Kindarians possess uh, symbiosis, intracellular symbiosis, mutual uh, symbiosis. You can see uh, the symbionts inside these tentacles as a dark point here. Uh, in fact, the, the real symbiosis was discovered in, uh, at the end of the uh, 19th century uh, in Germany by von Braun, but uh, the much, most of the study showing the interest of this symbiosis start uh, at the uh, mid 20th century, and particularly with uh, Len Muscati and his group in the uh, United States. Therefore, uh, uh, after a short presentation of the two partners, the symbiont and the, the host, I will uh, describe this symbiosis uh, from uh, the beginning, from the initiation, from the recognition, the role and its constraint, until the, the, the disruption of uh, this, uh, this symbiosis, from uh, the romance to the divorce. <laughs> First of all, um, the animal uh, host, uh, Knidarian, are the sister group, uh, the sister group of all bilateria. Uh, from, way, uh, from them that diverge about uh, 700 million uh, years ago. Uh, but in fact, uh, modern coral reef uh, that dates from, uh, from the Trias period, and then the symbiosis that uh, is known today dates also from, from this period. Uh, probably symbiosis appears separately in the different uh, lineage of, of Nidaians. The algal partner of this symbiosis is a uh, dinoflagellate, uh, generally called uh, zooxanthellae. But it may be in some cases some chlorella, some uh, green algae, uh, in uh, some hydrozoan and uh, some cyanimone. Uh, the morphology of this algae greatly differs from the free living stage, where you have uh, uh, two, uh, two flagella and a complex uh, cortex at the surface of the, of the cell and uh, in hospite, inside the, the host cell. Uh, they are living intracellularly in the host cell, uh, where they occupy almost 99% of the volume of the host cell. You can see here two zooxanthella inside the host cell. Uh, the cytoplasm, animal cytoplasm is, uh, is here. It's very, very small, and the membrane of, uh, of the animal surrounded uh, the zooxanthella. Interestingly, uh, the chloroplast of uh, this uh, dinoflagellate is bonded by free membrane, suggesting it was uh, derived from uh, uh, an ingested uh, algae. Dinoflagellate are the sister group of apicomplex, where you can find uh, plasmodium. Uh, and uh, the pyrenoid at the center contains the, the uh, rubisco, the CO2 fixing enzyme of this uh, algae. The size of the zooxanthellae uh, genome is uh, uh, more than three times larger than that of, of the host. Chromosomes in this uh, dinoflagellate are permanently uh, condensed here, and there is no histone protein inside the, the, the nucleus, the perocarium. Zooxanthellae, 
symbiont are living inside the uh, endodermal cells of the of the animal. Don't forget that cnidarians uh, are diploblastic animal with a nectoderm, an epiderm containing cnidocyte and uh, endoderm uh, separated by uh, a thin layer of collagen called mesoglea. And uh, the zooxanthellae are living inside these endodermal cells which surround normally the gastric cavity, the cell enteron. Uh, yeah, I forgot to say that uh, there is between one to eight million of zooxanthellae per square centimeter of the, of the host, depending on the environmental condition. Thanks to this uh, symbiosis, corals, in fact, may live in a nutrient-poor seawater where they act as ecosystem engineer to build uh, coral reef in clear uh, tropical uh, waters. Uh, this explaining the, the Darwin paradox to find uh, such a prolific environment in uh, such a poor uh, nutrient uh, environment. Coral reef host about 30% of the total known marine biodiversity in only 0.1% of the total uh, sea surface. And coral reefs are not only important for biodiversity, but they are also important for human society, uh, for coastal protection. Uh, they provide uh, food for almost 500 million of people, and also they provide incomes from uh, the tourism industry. Sambodinum was uh, initially described as a single species in the, in the 60s, uh, found in all different coral and uh, other species. But in fact, today, uh, nine uh, clades are recognized and they are distributed in the different uh, order of Nidarian, but also uh, they can be found in other uh, phylum, uh, like Mollusca, for example, where they can form e extracellular uh, symbiosis. But in fact, a recent study uh, published uh, last year uh, found that each clade possesses a huge diversity of subclades. Uh, for example, this study found about 260 different subclades in the single species of the coral Stylophora pistillata. There is a huge diversity, in fact, of the symbionts. Then, to, to summarize, uh, initially when it was uh, discovered, uh, it was thought that there was one zooxanthella for all the coral and gindarian species, but it was wrong. In the 80, uh, with the advent of, of genetics, uh, we discovered that there was a lot of uh, different zooxanthellae, thought to be uh, one zooxanthellae per, uh, per uh, uh, host species. It was also uh, wrong. And it's now that uh, it appears that the association is far more complex uh, and uh, the association is controlled also by environmental parameters. It can be a different set of, of symbionts inside a host. And uh, some symbionts appear to, to confer some adaptation to the environmental parameters. Then it uh, suggests that the, the association between host, coral, and uh, or sea anemone, and uh, the zooxanthellae are uh, closely controlled. And it is right, uh, zooxanthella are recognized by a range of specific receptors close to the receptor uh, involved in uh, innate, innate uh, immunity in, uh, in vertebrates. It should be noted that the, the repertoire of immune system in, in coral is almost as diverse as that of, uh, of human and, and vertebrates, uh, which was uh, discovered by the study of the genome uh, a few years ago. Then, after the initial cell contact between the host and the symbiont, there is uh, endocytosis of the, of, the, of the symbiont. And here there is a, a second step of control. Uh, the, the wrong, the, the bad zooxanthellae may be destroyed by uh, apoptosis or autophagy. Uh, and the, the, the good zooxanthellae, good for an environmental, for a given environment, uh, are uh, finally uh, uh, inside the host cell uh, separated by, uh, to, the, to the cytoplasm by a symbiosome, by a symbiotic membrane, and their number is controlled uh, for each coral cell. Their number is controlled for a given species. You have a certain number of, of zooxanthellae. 
However, the, the mode of control of the number of uh, the auxentile pair cells, you can find uh, here in this schema from one to eight uh, the auxentile pair cells, is totally unknown for, uh, presently. Probably it involves the regulation of uh, pH of the symbiosome, but for instance, it's uh, totally unknown. And uh, finally, uh, at the end of the of the process, there can be a description of the, of the symbiosis and destruction of the symbiosis. This is a process called uh, bleaching. I will uh, speak about this uh, later. The major benefit of this symbiosis is, in fact, nutritional. More than 90 percent and up to 95 or 99 percent of the photosynthate uh, of, the, of the symbiont may be transferred to the, to the host cell. And uh, the host cell also recycle nitrogen and, uh, and phosphorus, avoiding a, any loss in the environment. It is why uh, this uh, symbiosis uh, lead to such diverse and prolific ecosystem, uh, but the, the, the coral reef. Other benefits, in fact, include uh, optimal exposure to light for, for, the, for the symbiont and protection of the auxentile from, uh, from predation. But living in symbiosis uh, lead to severe constraints for an animal cells. The, the first constraint is uh, to give uh, an optimal surface for light absorption for the photosynthesis of, of symbionts. The second is to protect the animal host from sunburn. The third constraint is to supply the symbiont with CO2, with carbon dioxide. And the, the last constraint is to avoid any oxidative stress resulting from the hyperoxia, which results from the zooxanthella photosynthesis. First constraint, uh, optimal surface. Uh, in fact, the morphology of uh, tissue of some corals and sea animals change uh, according to the amount of light in order to optimize uh, the, the photosynthesis of the symbiont. Uh, light here for the coral Plerogera during the day form bubbles, and during the night the bubbles disappear and it forms tentacles. It becomes a predator. It, it is the same for, uh, with a long-term mechanism of adaptation of the shape of the skeleton. You can see that, uh, for example, flat corals uh, deep coral, excuse me, deep coral are flat compared to a shallow one. Uh, the same here for Styrophora pistillata, and uh, you can see here another species, uh, Turbinaria, is flat compared to the, to the shallow one. Uh, also, this system, which is also the mechanism is totally unknown, uh, allows the, the, the coral to optimize the amount of light. There is also a, an, ad an adaptation of the micromorphology of, of the skeleton. Uh, which amplify from three to, to five-fold the ambient light falling of the, of the coral surface. This means that the, the amount of light within the coral tissue is finally higher than the uh, amount of uh, the incident light. Uh, the, the coral skeleton acts as a, as a reflector to increase the amount of light where uh, the auxentera are uh, localized. localized. Due to photosynthesis, due to symbiosis, symbiotic coral uh, living in uh, shallow tropical water receive 30 times the dose that cause sunburn in uh, human every day. So why don't coral get sunburn? Uh, Methanolic extract of, uh, of coral tissue show that in addition to uh, zooxanthella pigment and, and chlorophyll, you can see uh, a peak at a UV, uh, UV absorbing peak uh, whose surface, whose size, depends on the, on the amount of light received by, uh, by the coral. Uh, low in the dark, it is uh, very high in the, uh, in the full sun. In fact, these uh, UV-absorbing compounds are mycosporin-like amino acid, MAA, which act as a natural UV screen. And uh, you can see that this peak corresponds to a, a suite of different UV-absorbing compounds synthesized by the symbiont. While uh, a normal uh, animal cell suffer from, uh, from UV, microalgae and uh, free-living zooxanthellae are protected with this MR from, from some burn, from UV. In the symbiotic cells, microsporin-like amino acids produced by the symbionts are transferred 
to the host, where they are metabolized in several other UV absorbing compounds, protecting the cell from sunburn. There is um, uh, Australian people made a patent of this uh, mycosporin like amino acid to, to obtain uh, uh, protection for, from UV for human. The capacity of, uh, of Nidarian cell to, to synthesize uh, these uh, compounds com comes from a uh, uh, gene transfer uh, from, from a bacteria, as shown by uh, this, this study. The third adaptation is uh, the absorption of carbon uh, dioxide. Remember that uh, the xanthellae are living inside the endodermal cells, far from the CO2 carbon pool, from the dissolved inorganic carbon pool in the seawater. The metabolic CO2 produced by the host and the symbiont, by the respiration of the host of the symbiont, is also not uh, sufficient. Then it, uh, it needs a, a direct uptake of uh, CO2 from the environment to, uh, to the zooxanthellae. This figure uh, summarizes uh, this mechanism of carbon concentrating mechanism operating in, in, uh, in coral tissue. In fact, the mechanism of uh, CO2 supply is very similar to the mechanism of bicarbonate absorption found in, uh, in the kidney, in the tubule of, uh, of vertebrate kidney. It involves a proton ATPase and a, a series of different uh, ion carriers and uh, carbonic anhydrase. We found 80 different isoforms of uh, carbonic anhydrase in uh, this system. Some steps uh, remain to be, uh, to be di discovered. We, we don't know what are this, uh, this kind of, of carrier. Uh, finally, uh, you can see here that this process uh, leads to an increase, to a change a variation, huge variation of pH inside the tissue of the, of the coral from seven in nine to nine, to pH nine during the day. Uh, every day, with every, every each uh, daily cycle, the, the coral tissue submit uh, a large change in the, in the pH. And this process leads to an increase of 15 fold, the total concentration of, uh, of CO2 in the coral tissue. This is a concentrating mechanism. And uh, the last constraint uh, result from uh, hyperoxia and used by the symbiont photosynthesis. Normal in a, in a plant cell, the daily increase in oxygen concentration is in fact rare in an animal cells. And uh, this increase of oxygen concentration leads to uh, production of a reactive oxygen species. Normally, uh, superoxide uh, ion is uh, transform in, uh, in hydrogen peroxide by the superoxide dismutase, the first enzyme involved in uh, oxidative stress resistance. And then we, we studied uh, this, uh, this enzyme in the coral symbiosis using uh, activity gel, a kind of gel which uh, maintains the activity of uh, on the enzyme. Normally in a classical animal cell, you have two uh, isoforms of this uh, enzyme. In, uh, symbiotic uh, sea anemone and, and coral, you have several isoforms, as many as in plant cell, in fact. Uh, in this uh, model system, the anemonia viridis, uh, sea anemone from the Mediterranean Sea, what we, we use, you can see the distribution of these different isoforms in different compartments, the ectoderm, the endoderm, and uh, the zantelae. And you can see that in, even in the tissue of the, of the animal, you can have very unusual uh, isoform for uh, animal cells, the iron SOD. And uh, the, the, the pattern of uh, this, uh, this enzyme is regulated by uh, symbiosis since uh, the pattern is different in normal and aposymbiotic uh, uh, C. anemone. But even if uh, the symbiosis is in fact very stable over time, the symbiosis may last uh, years, century, millennium. The, 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 the coral can live some several uh, millennium. Uh, in fact, this, this symbiosis is curiously uh, very sensitive to an, uh, environmental parameters and particularly to uh, hyperthermia. You can see that uh, an increase uh, as little as one degree, uh, 0.5 to one degree Celsius, is uh, enough to increase the disruption, the divorce between the host and the symbiont, the disruption of this uh, symbiosis. 
is indeed estimated that almost 20% of the surface of the, uh, of the reef area in the world already disappeared during the last 50 years due to this uh, process, this coral bleaching. Uh, even if uh, bleaching affects all the reef, uh, I just uh, take this uh, uh, slide as an example for the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, last year there was a great uh, bleaching event uh, which affects the northern part of the Great Barrier Reef here and which uh, led in some place to the uh, death of more than 50% of the coral in this northern part while there is normally no direct impact of human activity, no impact of the human industry or so and so on. And uh, this, this is probably due to the, in fact, to the increase uh, of the duration of the period of high sea surface temperature as shown is for the last uh, major bleaching event in the Great Barrier. Uh, you can see that uh, the duration of this high temperature period is increasing uh, from an event to another event. Despite abundant work, the, the mechanism, the intimate mechanism of, of bleaching remain uh, poorly understood and seem to vary according to uh, the environmental condition and also the, 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 the species, both the host and the symbiont species. Uh, the symbiont may be uh, the primary tide trigger, as shown here. You can see that the photosynthetic efficiency is affected. The uh, one uh, important protein of the photosystem 2 is also affected here. But in, in some other cases, it can be the host which is affected. You can see here uh, a stimulation of oxidative defense of the host and uh, an increase of oxidative damage. You have during a bleaching process an increase of DNA fragmentation and uh, an increase of caspase activity. And uh, the host uh, also, uh, uh, the hyperthermia increase uh, the production of nitric oxide by the host, which probably act as a, as a second messenger, as a signaling system uh, of the symbiosis to disrupt the symbiosis. Then in fact, uh, it's impossible now to, to, to really uh, determine the, the mechanism. Uh, probably uh, the bleaching mechanism results from different mechanisms, from exocytosis of ill cells, if it, uh, the zooxanthellae cells, hostile detachment, lysis, lysis of uh, both cell and the symbiont. Uh, uh, there's probably a, a huge variety, but in fact, we don't know exactly uh, why. I mainly talk about uh, the symbiosis between uh, coral and uh, the but in fact, uh, there is uh, like in, uh, different other organisms, there is a lot of other organisms living in, in, uh, in, the, in the holobiont, in the, in the, in the coral holobiont, particularly uh, virus, as shown here, in the ilfi coral also, bacteria, fungi, uh, archaea, uh, which are uh, beginning to be discovered, in fact. Uh, I, I just show this, this figure that we, we, uh, we published last year. In the Mediterranean coral, we discovered that about three-thirds of the, of the microbiota is composed of, of a spirochet close to, to Borrelia. Uh, well, in fact, this, the composition and, and, and uh, of the distribution of this microbiota is uh, not, not really known, and it's a, one of the major goals of the, of the Tara expedition, the Tara Pacific, that uh, I co-lead with uh, Serge Plan from, from the CNRS, and the Tara is uh, presently uh, in Taiwan. Microbiota is, in fact, very stable over time and uh, over geographic area when, when environmental conditions are, are not uh, uh, are stable. Uh, you can see here the, the same uh, microbiota of the, of the red coral in the Mediterranean Sea, but it's the same in all the different parts of the Mediterranean. And this microbiota is also probably uh, regulated by uh, the nervous system, as shown elegantly here by the we study on the model system Hydra by the group of uh, Thomas Bosch in, in Germany, polyp lacking uh, nerve uh, and uh, gland cells uh, have a totally modified uh, microbiota. What is the role of this microbiota? In fact, we don't know. We, we don't really know. Uh, we know that some uh, bacteria are nitrogen-fixing bacteria. There is uh, synthesis of some vitamin, but most of these microbiota, and particularly uh, fungi and archaea, the very is totally unknown. But 
uh, as uh, it was shown that for, for some uh, zooxanthella, particularly or some bacteria, uh, this uh, uh, symbiont may confer some resistance to hyperthermia. It was uh, suggested by, by some colleagues to, to modify uh, the, the, the microbiota of uh, this animal to, to uh, let them more tolerant to climate change and to use them to restore uh, some, some reef, a process called assisted evolution by uh, some uh, Australian colleagues. I um, hope that I convince you of the interest uh, of this uh, symbiosis, which go from, in fact, from uh, cell biology to, to ecology. And uh, this work would not be done without uh, many people and many PhD, particularly Paola, Paola Furla and uh, Sylvie Tambute, who are now, now professor and uh, research director, and many other students, colleagues, friends uh, in uh, the Center Scientific of Monaco, where most of this work, of this work was done, and uh, in this uh, university also, and uh, also a colleague from uh, uh, United States, Malcolm Schick and Virginia Weiss, and many other people. Many thanks. Thank you for this very captivating lecture. I, I, I even forgot to put the light on when, when you were speaking. Um, <laughs> are there questions uh, in, the, in the room? We can handle a few. Yes. Uh, Pierre Ancronaz, and then. Uh, all right. I've been fascinated by your presentation. I'm an astronomer, and we are looking for the time being at uh, the liquid water we have underneath the surface of uh, Enceladus or Europa. There is a mission that the uh, European Space Agency will send. And have you had development of life? near the hydrothermal sources, completely different from what you have presented here, where you need uh, light, UV, oxygen, while in those hydrothermal sources, we probably have heat, sulfur, and maybe hydrogen. So I'm, I'm totally uh, un- <laughs> biological uh, scientist, but I'm fascinated by uh, what you presented. Thank you. Yes, probably uh, the, the two systems of symbiosis, that, the symbiosis that we found in the, in the deep sea vents and the symbiosis, the phototrophic symbiosis, are finally the same kind of, uh, of, um, of, uh, of system with similar mechanism. In the both symbiosis in the deep uh, sea, you have also a concentrating system for inorganic carbon and so on. But uh, the, the intimate mechanism, the origin of the, of the, of the, of the products are, are totally different. It's sulfur from the deep sea and, and carbon from the, from the surface. But finally, uh, they evolve. Uh, as with a similar constraint. And there is a co-evolution of these uh, two uh, different symbiosis. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for this wonderful talk. Um, I, I, we don't know much about the, the innate immune system response in, in corals. Um, I, I was wondering how the, the, the cnidarian perceive their, their, their on, on the symbiont. Is there any work done on this subject? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, there is now a lot of work developed these uh, last, uh, I would say, uh, five, six years on, on this uh, mechanism of recognition and, uh, and the immune immunity. It started from, uh, some, uh, from the first uh, genome published, uh, the genome of Acropora published by uh, Australian and Japanese colleagues. Uh, and it shows curiously that uh, the, the genome of corals is as, as complex as the genome of, uh, of vertebrates. And uh, the, the repertoire of this uh, uh, molecule for uh, immunity is very large. Uh, we found everything. And uh, it seems that this repertoire is used uh, as, a, as a way to, 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 to select uh, the, the symbionts. Uh, but it's not now uh, totally known, uh, but there is a, a lot of, uh, of study uh, starting now on this topic. Pascal, Pascal Cossard will ask a question. I have a very practical question. So in the lab, 
So do you grow the corals? Yes. And how long does it take to have a piece of coral? And uh, how do you proceed? And uh, do you inoculate your corals? And do you warm <laughs> them? Do you eat them? I and, uh, invite you to, to visit the, the lab <laughs> of the Sun Scientific. Um, yes, in order to, to work on this kind of animal, uh, we, we have to develop culture of these animals in uh, controlled conditions. Not forget that, uh, don't forget that these animals are protected by CTS and, and, and so on. And it's uh, very difficult to, to collect them from, from the field. Uh, then we, we develop uh, almost 30 years ago the culture of this animal in controlled condition. And uh, contrary to what uh, is uh, happened with uh, Mediterranean species, the tropical species grow very well in uh, optimal condition. We are growing them in uh, 12 hours of light, 20 hours of dark, with, uh, with uh, feeding them and uh, with a good uh, optimal temperature. So and the growth rate is uh, from, uh, from uh, 10 to uh, 30 centimeters of skeleton per year. Per year, per so year. one year to get that. 10, 10 to 20, to 30. It's huge, in fact, in normal condition, in optimal condition. Uh, it is uh, obligatory if we want to develop uh, the study, the experimental study of this organism. But presently, um, there is some, some, some problem eh, for, for the study of this organism. Uh, two problems. The, the first one is, in fact, we don't, uh, meet, uh, don't um, uh, control the total cycle of, uh, of their life. This means that we, we cannot obtain easily the reproduction of this organism. And uh, also we cannot uh, use, uh, we cannot uh, perform cell culture uh, of, of this organism. Curiously, they, are, uh, they regenerate very easily, but it's very difficult to obtain uh, culture of these of his cells. So you can, you can collect sums and then uh, increase the size? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Laurence uh, Zivogel. Thank you very much. I was very impressed by your talk, indeed, even though I'm not in this field. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering whether these uh, organisms have an innate uh, immunity, and if not, whether fishes, which could stick around, would neutralize the host and the nose and all these uh, uh, pathogenic uh, mechanisms that normally are kept in check by the innate immune system. So would you didn't uh, allude to the possibility that fishes, small fishes, could regulate, counter-regulate this, the damage of these corals. So, you know, mm -hmm. it has to do. My question has to, uh, <laughs> to two edges, if I can say so. Uh, I have to say, but I, I don't know. I cannot answer to, to this uh, to this question. There is some colleague from uh, um, Banyuls Observatory who are starting uh, to 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 study. Uh, both the transcriptome of the, of the sea animal and the transcriptome of, of fishes to understand the uh, relationship between uh, the two uh, partners. But uh, for instance, I cannot answer. We have to stop now, yeah. but we will. Uh, still a very small question. Yeah, a very short one. Uh, but with the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are corals some kind of a marine equivalent to lichens that there is on Earth, and that also um, photosynthetic symbionts? And are there any um, convergent evolution and similar solution to similar problems, and in particular, sensitivity to hyperthermia? Uh, I don't know if we can uh, really speak about convergent evolution, but of course, yeah, there is, uh, in fact, uh, a lot of different phototrophic uh, endosymbiosis. Uh, lichen in the, in the uh, lichen are an example, but in the sea there are many different endos endosymbiosis which are phototrophic. And uh, we finally uh, have the same problem uh, to, uh, to use, to, to, to uptake, to absorb uh, CO2 and to, to, to manage uh, the oxygen uh, inside the, the, this kind of cells. Um, but we, we cannot say really that there is a convergent evolution between uh, lichens and, uh, and uh, marine photo, uh, phototrophs. All right. Thank you again. And uh, we go to the next speaker.